Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Jennifer Marie, where I teach you different ways to make money online and how to become a work from home freelancer. Today, I am super excited to talk to you about Photoshop's new Generative Expand AI tool. This is a little different from Generative Fill. I'm going to teach you how to use this in Photoshop and how to use both tools together. If you click on the link in the description below, my referral link, you can see that Adobe is offering a free trial. Once you go to my link, just click on creativity and design and click on Photoshop. And you can see that there's a free trial so you can test out these amazing AI tools for free. Now, generative AI is available in Photoshop beta. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the free trial or if you already have a subscription to Photoshop, you're going to open up Photoshop beta. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up the Creative Cloud desktop and make sure that you update to the latest version of Photoshop beta in order to access this new tool. So you'll open up Creative Cloud desktop, click on apps. You'll either click on update and update your Photoshop beta app or click on all apps and then type in Adobe Photoshop beta and you'll go to that and make sure to install that. Okay, so I have updated to the latest version and we're going to test out this tool together. I do have a full tutorial on how to use Generative Fill, which I've linked you to in the description below. But today we're going to talk about how to use Generative Expand, which has just been released. We're going to do a series of demos. In the first demo, I have opened up an image of myself. This is a really small image, but I really like it. Imagine I'm a real estate agent and I want to create a real estate ad or a brochure or something for my website using this picture. We're going to use Generative Expand to do that. First, we'll click on the Crop tool. Now, normally, if you wanted to crop a photo, at the top here, you would select whatever ratio you want. Maybe that's square. And let's say I wanted a 16 by nine ratio for my real estate ad now, obviously, normally, if I were to crop this, it would be cropping out my hair and my body. So we're going to use Generative Expand to fill in the image. And all you have to do is drag on the side to expand the image, and we can reposition it afterwards. And then at the top here where it says Fill, make sure to select Generative Expand. And here you can type in a text prompt of what you would like it to put in the background or you can see what it will come up with all on its own and just click generate. And here you can see it's come up with three different variations. It has filled in my clothing with a nice white suit and it's given this nice background. And what's great about this is you can see there is texture and shadows rather than just cutting out the image of myself and putting it in front of a completely white background, this has depth and dimension and looks like I'm actually standing in front of a wall. Let's look at the other variation. And this has even more texture in the background and more shadowing and a little different outfit. And we can look at the third variation. And this one is even cleaner. And you can go ahead and press generate again and again to keep looking at different variations or keep expanding this image as you want. So now let's try another demo. And I'm sure you've had it before where you want to put a picture in a frame, but the picture ratio does not match the frame. So let's say I have this cute picture of a baby and I want to put it in a portrait style frame. Now I could just crop it like that, but I don't really want to. I want to include some of the park background. So what I can do is once again, go to the crop tool, then expand on the edges and reposition the photo to where I want it to fill the frame. Now I'm going to click generate and you can see that just like that, it's given us three different options to choose from. So we can just go ahead, print this and put it in our frame and it will fit perfectly without having to crop the image. Now I'm going to show you how we can easily create a thumbnail for YouTube. So lately there's been talk from the US government about how aliens actually exist. And I'm seeing videos and news articles about aliens. So let's say you want to do a video on that. I've got this cute picture of a little alien. Once again, I'm going to go to the crop tool I'm going to choose a 16 by nine ratio, which is what is used for YouTube thumbnails. And again, just expand it out. And this time I'm going to tell this software what I want it to generate. So beside generate, I'm going to put in outer space with planets and then click generate. And you can see that it has used the generative expand tool to add in a bunch of planets and stars and make it look like it's outer space. 
You can click generate again to test out some more options. And I also want to show you how we can use the generative fill tool, which is different from generative expand to make any adjustments to this. So let's say I like this one, but I'm not a big fan of what they've done here with the little alien's body. So I can use the lasso tool and select this area. And then I can either tell the generative fill tool what I want to put in its place or just click generate to see what it's come up with. So it's changed some of the options. This one, it's given it a couple weird little legs. This one, no legs. I'm going to type in four legs. And now it's given me a few different options with multiple legs. So this is one of the ways that you can experiment using generative expand with generative fill. Then you can just add some text and you have this awesome little thumbnail that you can use for your YouTube video about aliens. And in our last demo, I want to show you how you can turn a little picture of a dog, for example, into a series of different social media posts for Instagram. Let's say I have an Instagram page about pet care or about my dog. Once again, I'm going to the crop tool. I'm choosing the square ratio one to one. I'm just going to expand the image and have the dog placed where I want him. And I'm going to type in jungle. Let's see if this can create a cool jungle sort of background. And this looks really awesome. So we've got this cool little jungle background. Now let's try the beach. And look at that. It really looks like he's just chilling on the beach, this little dog. We can even incorporate the generative fill tool by going to the lasso tool once again. And let's say I want to add a sailboat here. I'm going to draw where I want the generative fill tool to place a sailboat and I can just put in sailboat. So you can have fun experimenting with this depending on what your Instagram post is about. And then you can just download all of these different pictures and you can do pictures related to whatever the season is. Maybe it's Christmas or Halloween and just add a little caption and make it engaging for your viewers and upload these to Instagram. Any sort of idea you have for a post, you can have a custom image using your dog or your pet or your own image combined with your ideas. And Adobe's tools are just getting better and better. This is only the start. I've been having so much fun with these tools. I'm using them every day. And I encourage you guys to try it out as well. It is so much fun. So if you want to try Photoshop, you can click on my link in the description below because right now Adobe is having a free trial of Photoshop. And if you're looking for a free alternative to this, I will be releasing some new tutorials soon on my Studio Gen channel talking about free alternatives to Photoshop, Generative Fill, and Generative Expand. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to be the first to view those tutorials as well. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And I'll see you all in my next tutorial.